Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Dodie. We're gonna be making a recipe out of this very old cookbook. My aunt gave this to me a number of years ago. Originally it was from 1938 and then they uh, reproduced it again in 1949. So the recipes are very old from the 30s and 40s. And we are going to take a look at bread pudding. And we're gonna make bread pudding as our dessert today. So join me today as we make one of the classic recipes. And this cookbook from Sears, it's the Kenmore cookbook, is for the American woman. And it's a very old cookbook. This was published in 1949, but if you look at the copyright dates, it's actually copyrighted in 1938 originally. So it's a very old book. Um, has a lot of interesting recipes from canning and um, foreign words and phrases, herbs and spices, and even more. Right, so one of the recipes I'm gonna be using today is for bread pudding. This one has uh, two cups of dry bread crumbs and we have an old loaf that we're gonna use. Um, we have four cups of milk, scalded. So we're going to boil that on the stove just until it comes to a boil and then turn it off two eggs, half a cup sugar, fourth teaspoon of salt, fourth teaspoon of nutmeg, and a teaspoon of vanilla. We are not going to do the raisins in our bread pudding today. One thing we like to do is make our own vanilla. This one was made in 2020. We just take about five to six vanilla beans, cut them in half, slit them open, and then pour either vodka or bourbon on top. Uh, this one is vodka. I marked it with a little V so I would remember. I do prefer the bourbon vanilla better. Um, and after eight months, you have your own vanilla extract. So we're going to use this in our recipes today. All right, the ingredients for our bread pudding is some old bread. We have some here. I've already um, cut up some of this into chunks. I'll show you that in just a minute. You need about two cups of that. We're gonna do a teaspoon of vanilla. We're using our homemade vanilla. The recipe calls for a fourth teaspoon of salt and a fourth teaspoon of nutmeg, but I also like cinnamon, so I added a fourth te teaspoon of cinnamon. We have a half a cup of sugar. We have two eggs. Those are rather large eggs and four cups of sugar. And you can also add raisins, uh, yellow raisins or the regular raisins or dates or figs. Um, but we're gonna add nuts and that's optional as well. So if you don't like nuts, you can leave that out. And if you like fruit, you can add that in. All right guys, so we're gonna finish breaking up the rest of this bread. I'm just making it into, I don't know, about one inch or so pieces, just kinda breaking it up until we have all these crumbly type bite-sized pieces in this bowl. Now that we have all of the bread chopped up or crumbled up or torn up, we're gonna coat it with our four cups of milk. And we're gonna pour that all in and let it soak. We're gonna let it soak until it gets a little bit mushy. So just for about five minutes. Okay, while our bread is soaking, I'm gonna go ahead and whip up our eggs here and get them beaten. All right, now that we've beaten our eggs, I'm gonna add in a half a cup of sugar. It's just regular granulated sugar. Give that a little stir. I'm gonna add in our vanilla, our teaspoon of vanilla. We use the vodka vanilla, but you can do the bourbon vanilla. Or if you have imitation vanilla, you could do that, but I like the real vanilla. And we're gonna add our other spices, our salt, our nutmeg, and our cinnamon. We're gonna give that a stir until it's all combined. And we're gonna add that into our bread mixture. Okay, our bread has been soaking in the milk for about five minutes. It's nice and soft. I'm gonna go ahead and add our egg and sugar and spices to the mixture and give it a stir. Ok, 
Okay, I lightly greased a nine inch by 13 inch pan. I did it, um, just a little spray of olive oil, but whatever you have on hand. And I'm gonna pour our mixture, our milk soaked eggy bread mixture into this dish. And we're gonna spread it out. This is where you can add your raisins if you like, um, or your other fruits. We're gonna add nuts to ours. So I have a few chopped pecans. Um, you just kind of sprinkle those around. Just to give it a little texture. And then we're gonna bake this in the oven for one hour at 350 degrees. I love this section. It has a list of foreign words and phrases used in connection with cooking. A lot of them are French. You'll see um, like a la, a la mode, um, all the way down to uh, compote, eclair, pate, and there's a few more on this other side as well. It just tells us what they um, meant back in the 30s and 40s, what some of these words meant back then are the same ones that we use today. I think one of the most useful sections in this cookbook from the 30s and 40s is the temperatures and times to bake most things. This is, of course, approximate, um, but you have it in Fahrenheit, so you'll have to do the conversion for Celsius, um, but it talks about oven temperatures and how most breads, cakes, cookies have different temperatures here, as you can see, um, and how long to cook for. And here on the next page, it goes into uh, some more recipes as well. And then it goes into the meats and the poultries um, and what the correct cooking temperature is for those as well. For rare, medium, well done, even fish. Um, so it's a very helpful tool to kind of get an idea of how things uh, should be cooked, how long, and what temperature. Uh, it goes into the frying as well as the candy temperatures, how to make the divinity, uh, fudge, things like that. A lot of those are the recipes that we still use today as well. Another fun section of the book talks about um, the courses and what is a course, what makes up the course, and then also it goes into menus um, and what you could serve some menu ideas for different occasions, um, from Thanksgiving to Christmas to even uh, weddings and different parties. I uh, like the children's party. We have chicken sandwiches, ice cream, fruit butter sandwiches, small cakes, a birthday cake with the name and date, and candles, orange juice, and candy. Uh, they um, have afternoon teas, and even a bridge supper. I don't think you see those anymore, but there's your menu idea if you are having a bridge supper. And the men's card party. This section of the book is pretty neat. It tells you how to lay out the table for appetizers or first courses, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, even dessert and coffee courses, um, and how the table should be laid out. All right, I just pulled it out of the oven. Our bread pudding looks delicious. One way that you can tell it's done is you can take a knife and just make sure that it comes out clean, um, that it's not still runny or wet on the inside, kind of like a regular cake and it looks delicious. You could always make um, a sauce to put over this, like a rum sauce or some type of sauce that you wanna serve it with. Um, so we might do that later on today, but for now we are done with our bread pudding. It smells delicious. Don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and comment down below what we should do next. And check out my new channel, Fun with Alex.